everyone to our 40th anniversary celebration day. We're so glad to have our friends from Crossroad Church joining us today. And let's all stand. We're going to sing together. It's hymn number 66. If you'd like to use the hymnal, the words will be up there on the screen for you. Stand and we're going to sing. To God be the glory. Great things he has done.
seat. Um, I did want to read a letter from our superintendent, the Evangelical Free Church superintendent, uh, in uh, light of our morning today. It says, Dear Christ, dear Free Church of Sacred Town, congratulations on your celebration of 40 years of gospel ministry as a church. Though I cannot be with you today, I thank God that you endeavor to be a shining gospel outpost for your community. I'm also thankful that for Pat, uh, Pastor Faith, uh, Jeff and Faith Diligent Faithful Ministry, they love the Lord and uh, you who still need Jesus is evident. Uh, I join you in thanking God for them. Okay. <laughs> uh, so much has changed in 40 years. A new GMC pickup truck was $5,400. I guess that was 40 years ago. Ronald Reagan was president, stamped for 20 cents. And the movie E.T. had debuted. It's interesting, interesting trivia there. Despite all that's re that has endeavored has changed, we rejoice that God and his gospel has not changed. Amen? Amen. Still the same message, still the same ministry. Uh, nor has our mission, as we celebrate it, let's recommit to loving God and others and to make disciples of all nations. May the Lord guard and guide us all as we follow him and reach out to others with his eternal good news. Please receive 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the Lord's work because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Rejoicing in his work in and through you, Kerry Doyle, superintendent of EFCA Allegheny District. So we thank uh, District Superintendent uh, Kerry Doyle for remembering us and uh, sending that uh, sort of a congratulation type of a, uh, uh, of a letter for us. Well, it is good to see uh, each and every one of you, and it is great to see the uh, Crossroads family. It's good to see Dorothy's family here. My goodness gracious, you're uh, competing with the hemlocks look like back there. <laughs> Only those from the church know what I'm talking about. But it's good to see each one of you. Remember, um, Crossroads was, the, was where Pastor Jack McClintock, before he retired, he was pastor, so you remember Pastor uh, Jack. And so this is, uh, this is the church family there. Um, so as we're thinking about this and the celebration today, we do uh, have a few uh, items uh, of, uh, we need to uh, announce. So it wouldn't be church service without an announcement, I don't think. So uh, Dick, you're going to have a, 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 come up here to the microphone. It's important everybody hears this announcement. Good morning, all. Good to see you all. I take a few minutes of the service to uh, do a little promoting. Uh, I don't know how many of you have heard of that we have a revival every year in September. It's coming up in 13 days, 24th of this month. It's at Fred Creek Valley Christian School. Uh, admission is $10. That includes a continental breakfast. Uh, and we have three good speakers that will give you a uh, a diversified uh, speaking and uh, different subjects. Uh, so if if you're interested, I uh, have wristbands. They're they're ten dollars for you. If uh, or if you can get them at the door, but we really would like to know how many we could expect because uh, we really do not know, and it's hard to determine on a continental breakfast what to bring. So. Uh, if you're interested, see me after the service. I can give you this flyer. You can take it back to Crossroads Church. And any of the Crossroads Church people would like to come, we're more welcome. We need all the man we can get. So that's, that's all I have for that. And on the church end of it, uh, in the past few weeks or maybe a month, we've been spissing up the church a little bit. I really thank everybody that participated in getting the church looking nice and uh, inside and out so everyone that participated at the church helped clean and everything thank you very much from the building to ground connection thank you thanks dick and that's our men of grace men of grace so that was a uh, revival coming up on the 24th i encourage you to be a part of that men 
Uh, I believe that is all of our announcements. Uh, also, release time will be starting this coming week on, on Tuesday, so there will be that part of the church will be used downstairs, and that is in your bulletin. So, everybody glad to be here? Good to see everybody. I hope you appreciate being here. We love you. We're, we're glad to have uh, the church family with us. Stand with me if you would. We're going to unite our hearts in prayer. Uh, and then continue our time of worship together. Our Holy Father, we gather in the name of Jesus Christ today, your only Son, our only Savior. Lord, we are thankful for, as we think about this this morning, what, what faithfulness means to us today, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the people that you have chosen over the years to, to be a part of this church. Lord, to, to minister here, to encourage here, to serve you here, Lord. And we are where we are today very much because of the input and influence of others. And we thank you for all of those who have been faithful over the past uh, 40 years, Holy Father. Lord, what an awesome group of people that you have used here. And I would say, Lord, personally, what an awesome group of servants you have here in this church. Choice servants of Christ. And I personally thank you for each and every and every one here today. Lord, we acknowledge that all good that takes place comes from your mighty hand. Every blessing comes from you, the giver of every good blessing, Lord. So we thank you for all of those things. We acknowledge all of those things. We acknowledge our desperate need for you in every aspect of life and ministry. And Lord, today we just focus our heart, our thoughts, and our worship directly to you. May you be honored. May Jesus Christ be rightfully exalted today. We'll thank you for it again, Holy Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.
a Bible teaching church where the word of God, prayer, missions, and evangelism were of utmost priority. And they felt the Lord leading them to start such a ministry. On September 5th, 1982, the first service of the New Fellowship was led by Pastor Dan Moose at the Hayfield Grange Center in Sagertown, PA. 55 people attended the very first meeting. By week two, Sunday school for all ages was offered. In one month, Sunday evening and Wednesday evening services had been initiated. Within the first few months, the new fellowship became affiliated with the Evangelical Free Churches of America, set a constitution and bylaws, and committed to designate one-tenth of their offerings to missions. Within one month of their first meeting, the first missionary conference was launched with Paul Lundgren. Many missions conferences would follow, and many missionaries would be supported by and sent from Christ E. Free Church. This continues to this day. ministry pathfinders and they're planning another missions trip in the summer of 2023 however kudos to our youngest missionary ever will hemlock who at the age of 12 went with teen missions to honduras the launch of the church, it was not long before Grange Center became too small. A hundred attendees stressed the very foundations of the old building, so they had to say goodbye to Hayfield Grange Center and its outhouses. Temporarily meeting in the home of Tom and Lynn Kellogg, land was sought to purchase for the construction of a new church building. acres of land were purchased off Broadford Road for $18,000 and the plans began for the church building which we still enjoy today. Finances were secured, estimates taken, those minutes were kept with great care of those early meetings by Dorothy White. like this. Finally, which with much celebration and announcement, a groundbreaking service took place in the fall of 1983. By February of 1984, the lower level of the church was ready for services. Announcements were sent out to the community, inviting them to celebrate in our new facility. By September of 1987, the church was ready to make another special announcement. We would begin meeting in our beautiful worship center, in this picture, from left to right, are George Lewandowski, our building chairman, the senior pastor, Dan Moose, and Jim Culbertson, who became an associate pastor focusing on student ministries. In 1993, we were able to put up our lighted sign in the road. blessed with many talented members, all working for the furthering of God's kingdom and growing in their faith and in their own ministries. We have had musicians, writers, artists, children's workers, construction specialists, financial advisors, and more. 
God has provided for our every need to accomplish His work. He has been faithful. After Dan Moose, Pastor Gar Hall came to serve as pastor. by the faithful ministry of Pastor and Mrs. Clay. Before our current pastor, Jeff Wilson, came to us, Jim Clark served as interim. Many of the faithful have gone on before us to our heavenly home. We miss them deeply, but we treasure their memory of faithfulness and pray that we too will be faithful in our generation of ministry. church were married here in those early days, even before there were pews and carpet. The Gillettes are one couple. The Powells are another couple. These couples have faithfully reared their families at Christ Evangelical Free and ministered using their many gifts over the years. How many others were married here in this church? Raise your hand. downs of adolescence. Action Youth Group fulfilled this with both fun and intentional discipleship.
learners of the Good Shepherd, Jesus. in Sagertown Schools for many years. Pastor Jeff is the president of an awesome team. Intergenerational ministry is essential with the mature teaching the young. We have become increasingly intentional in this area, endeavoring to obey the command of Titus chapter two. Our monthly men's breakfast, the Men of Storm, provides a time of training, study, prayer, and sharpening for the men. Sisters of Encouragement, our women's group, meet regularly to encourage each other, teach each other skills, study the Bible, pray, and minister together. Sometimes we just plain enjoy being together. These, along with our main worship service, our small group ministries, Mix all age groups so that the cross-generational investments can be made. Some additional key outreach ministries have been the Winter Outerwear Giveaway and the Bike Clinic. Both have met the needs of those in our community and have given us opportunity and standing to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. At Christmas time, we like to take the opportunity to celebrate with the community and share the good news of great joy. We have offered community concerts, Christmas Eve candlelight services, and Christmas caroling events. In recent years, we've taken on the challenge of transforming our lower level and grounds into a Bethlehem town for a walk-through Bethlehem experience called Light in Bethlehem. Live animals, period costumes and tools, drama, food, and much more. Guests have the opportunity to experience the true meaning of that first Christmas, going back in time to the night Jesus was born. Hundreds of guests have come to visit our Bethlehem. Lifeline Resources is a self publishing arm of Christ Evangelical Free Church with free literature and biblical study for men and women. Our website is a treasure trove of resources to help each believer to be well equipped. In case you don't know, it's www.christefca.org. It has been now 40 years since God started this ministry and we celebrate God's faithfulness. We stand for the same principles with which we were founded our instruction and defense is from God's holy word. Our power is in the God to whom we pray, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our mission is still to take the good news that Jesus died and rose again to give us eternal life to all of Sagertown, Crawford County, and beyond. Our mission statement is connecting with others in order to connect them to Christ and to other Christ followers, the church. We continue to gather and worship and encourage one another. We grow and ask the Lord to make us faithful and fruitful servants as we go into our mission field each day as he commanded. God has been faithful. We strive to offer back to him the glory that he is due. Pray for us that we will be found faithful. And may the earth be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Habakkuk 2.14 
enjoy that? I hope you saw yourself. Some of you saw yourself a few times, I know. I enjoyed putting that together. I learned a lot. I wasn't here at the very beginning. We came in 2005. Um, but many of you were here from early days, early days. If for some reason I got something wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> and tell me, I'll fix it. I'll edit it in the final copy. Um, and if you would like a copy of that video, let me know. I can make it for you and send it to you um, by email, okay? So, um, that being said, we do have, still attending our church, five people who were charter members. Charter members. So we still have five that still attend regularly. And I'm going to call them up here right now because I think we need to honor them, don't you? Yeah, I think so. So, Jean Black, uh, Daryl and Wilma Means, Lois Schell, and Dorothy White. Let's give them a hand. because I was involved with Miracle Mountain Ranch, and that's a Western Can theme. You hear her okay? And that's a Western theme. So uh, that was one of the hats that I wore, and I was also quite involved with Vacation Bible School. We started out small, but then we had to go giant. And luckily, we had a lot of helpers here that had a vision for it, and it all fell together, not by my doings, but by the Lord's. And uh, we did some crazy hat things for summertime, but nothing that I can really remember offhand, but just uh, like I said, the, the cowboy hat was the main thing with the Miracle Mountain Ranch, and they got me out there, and they said, you got to ride a horse, and I said, no, <laughs> and yes, I'm old, I'm riding it, so you're going to get on it, so I got on a horse, and it knew what to do, so <laughs> it turned out okay. You have some current hats that you're wearing, though, that are different from that? Oh, um, right now I'm involved with um, the Sisters of Encouragement. And we're trying to start up another sewing class. Um, I, anytime there's any kind of dinner going on, I, uh, I near to boss everybody around the kitchen and tell them what to do. <laughs> She's minimizing her 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 ability. <laughs> She's actually in charge of our women's ministries. She does a fabulous job. Keeps us all hopping and keeps us all doing things. Right. I can't do it on my own. It takes it takes a whole bunch of us to put together everything. So if you have one memory that sticks out of the 40 years, share one of them with us. <laughs> I guess the main, main thing is the dedication of this building, and it's actually going to get started. I couldn't see the kind of money that's going to be spent on this, on this big building. I thought, no, we're never going to have enough people to fill it. Well, we filled it, and we went to two services, 
and we went to an evening service and it kept growing and that to me is the glory's working. That's the biggest memory that I have. It's good stuff. Good. Now if there was maybe one thing that you could tell us so that we can carry on, the next generation carries on, what, 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 what wisdom would you give us? Well, just look out for our youth. Uh, those are our future teachers. No matter what we do at home, they're our teachers. And if we don't teach them when they're little or sort out of diapers is when you got to start teaching them and let them be able to stand up and talk. I could never talk in front of the church. That was not one of my things. I was a background person. So um, I, when I come up here, I'm looking at the little kids, nothing personal people. <laughs> But uh, yeah, look out for our children and bring them up and, and show them the example. That was the most important thing is the example that you're giving them. Thank you, Lois. Thank you. Thank you for your years with us. Daryl, we'll let you kind of come up as one, well, okay? <laughs> now, uh, Daryl and Wilma also have gotten together at some bunch of the old slides. You know what slides are? All you little people, do you know what slides are? <laughs> Yeah, anyway, it's a machine that goes around and goes good and goes and then the picture comes up on the wall, okay? But anyway, he's gotten together a lot of the old slides, and so before and after the service, he's going to be helping with that. So, Daryl Wilma, what kind of hats have you guys worn throughout the years? Okay. We've never worn any physical hats. No. But <laughs> the very first one I had was the very first Sunday. Uh, after the service, uh, Pastor Dan said, Wilma, you take the money home, you're treasurer. <laughs> and for the next 18 to 20 years, I was treasurer. <laughs> and uh, over the years, um, we didn't have a janitor, so we took turns, you know. Somebody would do it this week and somebody else the other week. Uh, at one point, we were lay shepherds. And uh, okay, I wrote it down. <laughs> and we were greeters, and I was nursery worker, and I was recording secretary. Okay. All right. Daryl, can you talk that? <laughs> I don't think so. I was on the original building committee that found and located this land and got the old plans worked together. I, uh, I also worked as janitor. And I was on the several of the search committees when we needed new pastors. I was lay shepherd with Wilma at uh, uh, an area. I was the greeter, and I was, for a few years, a member of the choir. Yes, you were. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so now, you can tell two separate stories. We'll let you <laughs> separate. But if you have a, a one story, that one memory that you want to share. Well, we have special friends that uh, invite us to their house every year for Thanksgiving. And it's just wonderful. They love to show us. Good. I'm going to give you this because that keeps cutting out, I think. You know. <laughs> okay. no, that's great. Um, You're allowed to come too? Yeah, I used to do. <laughs> I think the most important thing is to just learn more of the Bible and continue in an attitude of prayer. Yes. That's what's keeping it going. That's right. Advice. Oh, stay true to the word. Good. Thank you. Say the thing. Same thing. You just basically said it. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Daryl Willem, for your years of, of faithful service with us. All right, Jean. Gina's worn a lot of hats. I know you have worn a lot of different hats. Can you tell us about them? Well, to start out with, Rich and I were married for seven years before we had any children. So I knew that was my mission in the church. So um, right here in this church, uh, when we just had the downstairs, uh, I had children in the furnace room taking care of them. Every little nook and cranny of some of you from the, that when we went downstairs, it was filled. So when they uh, built the upstairs here, it was uh, much easier. 
really. But anyways, we got along really good. And, uh, well, I said to myself and to the Lord, when I finally was able to conceive and have children, I would share it with the Lord. So, and you worked with MOPS for many oh, years. Oh, yes. I was in State College to a MOPS convention, and I actually brought it to Crawford County. There were several, like eight. I think there's only one now here in Crawford County. But anyways, I thought that was such a wonderful program for the young women. Very good. A memory. Oh, lots of good memories. I just love the little children. And when they make noise in church, it's okay. They make noise in church and at home, too. I had four daughters, and you can imagine. We had lots of noise. So anyways, just uh, love your children and bring them to church. That's good. That's good. And that's your advice then. Love yeah. your children and bring them to church. Yeah. Thank you, Jean, for your 40 years of service with us. Yeah, so when your kids come, I mean, if they scream their head off, that might be a little bit, you know, but if they say, ah, or coo or something, that's a sign of life. We like it. So don't even, don't say, oh, my kid talked too much or whatever. We like the sounds of children in our church. So, all Dorothy right. Dorothy just got sick. Of course, he just got sick and she's in there. Come on, Dorothy. This isn't my. This isn't her thing, but she's worn a lot of hats, and I know one of them was up there on the screen. But tell me all your hats that you've worn, the different things you've done. I think what I remember most is Bible school. And back in those days, we had these great big. I was a photographer. Great big cameras and. You had to bring the VCR along. <laughs> and so we had Jerry and I, a little red wagon, and then we carried the VCR, and then we took all these pictures. And wow, so. very good. You have a lot of those videos back there, too. So. <laughs> so, and you were the church secretary for a while, or so they were taking well, minutes? Well, they were getting ordered. Yeah, them, yeah. So. She makes a wonderful pie. A while back, she taught us how to make a pie crust. So, um, she's a beautiful seamstress. She's helped us a lot with our missions projects. I want to thank two of John and Faith Devin. Yes. And uh, Stell and Dwight and Stell. They were actually the first beginners. Yes. Uh, they yes. started it all. So. We miss them yeah. Yeah. so much, yes. Lucille is still with us. Um, a favorite know. memory? <laughs> I don't know if I should tell this or not. <laughs> Anyways, Jean, and I was helping her get ready for, I think it was her daughter's wedding reception. And some woman said, would you like me to make you a watermelon display? Mm -hmm. Of course, Jean says, yeah. Well, it was beautiful. But Jean got a bill about, what was it, 70 or $80 oh. <laughs> for the watermelon, remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, advice. Uh, just keep faithful. Keep faithful. Yes. All right. That's kind of goes along with our theme for the day. Let's give them all a hand. <laughs>
acoustic instruments sometimes. There you go. Terry, 
Uh, but thank each one of you for serving the Lord. And uh, we are, I believe, as a church where we are today because of the service of your service and of many, many others that uh, were a part of this uh, congregation. And uh, so uh, I'd like to pray. And George, if you'd pray. And Terry and, and Reverend Bean, you can close us in a minute. Our Holy Father, we thank you in Jesus' name today, and we think of what, a, what an awesome thing you have done with this church, Lord. Bringing it into existence was just a miracle of God, and we have heard of that, Lord, and we can remember, uh, I can remember Martha giving the testimony of the starting of this church, just a miraculous beginning. And uh, you were in it. Your Holy Spirit was moving so powerfully, and we thank you for that. And we thank you that your Holy Spirit moves today among us, accomplishing your will through us, Lord. Lord, we thank you for Jean and Daryl and Wilma and Lois and Dorothy. Lord, thank you for their faithfulness. Lord, we're not, for, we're not exalting anybody or pretending that anybody was perfect, but we do thank you for their faithfulness, Lord. And uh, thank you for, that, their, for their continued service today in many, many ways in this church family. Lord, and we think of others, just uh, we thank you for all who have sacrificed, who have given, who have served as a part of this church family. And Lord, we lift them up to you and, thank, and we thank you. Those that are living, those that have gone on before us, we thank you and praise you for your work through them. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to remember the beginnings of this church here, this uh, lighthouse for you. We just thank you for uh, your working in the hearts of so many people uh, in, in the beginning with these folks uh, here represented. Yes. And then throughout the years, uh, the many who have uh, participated and helped and, and worshiped here and served here Lord, uh, we just thank you because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. You are the one who has changed hearts and lives, brought uh, peace and joy within through the merit of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ on Calvary. We thank you for uh, all that you are doing in our lives today even, Lord, just to continue the work that has been started and, and uh, accomplished through the years, and may we just be faithful to you. We do pray for uh, those that we come about and uh, we associate with, and those of our community and friends and all, Lord, that uh, they too uh, might learn of Jesus and might trust in him and his merit of dying and his yes. his sacrifice for our sins but not for ours only but for the sins of the world lord may uh, many more <clears throat> trust jesus and yes. come into yes. faith in him uh, we just uh, thank you for that and for all that you are doing and will do in christ's name Lord, we just thank you for who you are and how you've had your hand on Christy Free all these years. And uh, we just uh, thank you for the work that you've done. And uh, we just thank you for the group that is here. We ask your blessing upon them. And we just think of others that have gone before us, um, their example, and uh, thankful for them. Uh, we just want to ask that you help us to continue to be the lighthouse yes. in this area in the future uh, as we go. In Jesus' name we pray. And gracious Lord, we're so thankful. We've sung, great is thy faithfulness. Yes. We've looked at your faithfulness down through the years as we've watched these pictures and or saw these pictures and listened to these testimonies of those that were faithful from the very beginning of this work started small but oh lord what you've done we're so thankful for your faithfulness and lord you're not finished yes thank god we're assured of that there's still a work to be done in sagertown and the surrounding area 
And Lord, we believe you're going to use Christ Evangelical Free Church in a very special way. Our prayer is, O oh God, send a mighty Holy Ghost revival. Pour out your spirit upon your church here, we pray. Minister in a very special way. And might we see growth, might we see numbers, precious children coming in. Thank you, Lord, for each one of the children we have right now. But we believe, Lord, you're going to bring even more in, and we're thankful for that. We're thankful for the families that have joined in the years since the beginning. And we pray, Lord, that you'll continue to draw by your Spirit those that you would want to be a part of the family of God here. Thank you, Lord, for working. Thank you for moving. And we say in return, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto us. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.
something for you to something for you to think about. And the question is, what is your legacy? And what is your influence in your realm of people that you contact, you have contact with, and people that God brings you in contact with every week? What's what's your influence in your church that you're a part of? I looked up legacy uh, just this morning, Merriam-Webster. I thought if I was going to preach on this, I better know what it means, right? So good old Merriam-Webster uh, on uh, legacy. And I turned out that Merriam-Webster doesn't define it as I thought it should be defined. So now I'm in a pickle. Legacy. A gift by will, especially of money, or other personal property. That's the Merriam-Webster's definition of legacy. So we may think of legacy as a type of inheritance passed on to family members. You know, our life savings go to our sons. It becomes their family's life savings. And we've been... We've been looking at this throughout the past month, I believe, in our morning service studies. But our greatest legacy for you and for me, whether you're a believer or you're not a believer in Jesus, whether Jesus has your heart or you don't care about Jesus, here's something you can take to the bank. You influence people more than you realize. Your life, positive or negative, influences probably everybody you come in contact with. So is it positive or negative influence? Is it a pos positive or negative legacy that you leave behind? Because of that person, I've become kind of like this. What does this look like? So our greatest legacy may not be what we leave behind for others after our death. But listen, our greatest legacy may be what we pass on of ourselves in the lives of others through our own eternal investment and influence through our lives, just connecting with theirs. Does that make sense? Our greatest legacy may be what we pass on of ourselves in the lives of others through our own eternal investment or spiritual influence. You know, the Bible calls that discipleship. That defines discipleship. So what legacy are you passing on to others? What is your spiritual influence and how is it affecting others? This legacy can be passed on. Your influence can be effective in your family. You can have a eternal, significant, positive influence in your church. You can have a significant spiritual influence in your school, on your sports team, in your workplace, or in your neighborhood. The possibilities are unlimited. In your exercise class, the possibilities are endless. Two passages of scripture. Be glad I've whittled it down from four to two already. <laughs> but one is John chapter one, verse 14, which says this. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. That is the person of Jesus. We beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. Then our second passage of scripture is Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 and following. And truly he gave some to be apostles and some to be prophets and some to be evangelists and some to be pastors and teachers. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edification of the body of Christ. And this until we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to be a full-grown man or woman, a full-grown man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. 
so that we no longer may be infants tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine in the dishonesty of men in cunning craftiness to the wiles and deceits of others, but that you, speaking the truth in love, may grow up in him, in Christ, even our head. Speaking the truth in love. Those two passages of scripture, here's our focus. Truth and love. Grace and truth. Jesus was a man who ministered with both grace and truth. As a son of God, he was able to balance those out. Sharing of truth is what he did. Being gracious is how he did it. Speaking the truth in love, the apostle says, that's supposed to work together like close working associates, like a marriage. Grace and truth. Truth and love. We commit, com communicate the truth of God, ideally, lovingly. They're a balance. Never, ever are we excused to be hateful sharing the truth. And never, never is it right to say, I'm just speaking the truth in love, brother, because I love you. That's, that's near blasphemy to mishandle God's word like that. So our mission statement for our church is connecting with others in order to connect others to Christ and to others Christ and to other Christ followers, which is the church. I did dig up what appeared to be the mission statement for the church at its beginning. And this I wanted to read it to you. Christ Evangelical Free Church is committed to demonstrating God's word through his unconditional love to reach people and develop mature disciples in the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we read that, it's though a bit longer than our present mission statement for the church, the earlier mission statement not only describes what we are to be doing, but it tells us how we are to be doing it. And I was looking back on that and didn't didn't dawn on me. I mean, I knew this was the mission statement when we came here. But it shares what we're to be doing, but also how we're to be doing it. It succinctly tells what that manner of disciple making and sharing the truth of God, how it's done. Number one, we're to be doing that by demonstrating personally the word of God at work in our own lives. Demonstrating God's word, that is, obediently striving to live out God's word and his principles in our lives every day. That is how we're to be sharing the truth. But secondly, manifesting God's unconditional love. That's how we disciple. That's how we communicate. That's how we minister. Not, well, I'm just being truthful now. Oh, I love you. But now I'm being truthful. Now I'm speaking the truth in love, whether you receive it that way or not. Grace and truth. Truth and love. There's no excuse for doing it otherwise. No excuse whatsoever. So those things are close working associates and they should be, should be always used together to balance one another. So I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians 13 where I want to get just a few points and then we're going to be closing. But we've been looking at our Sunday morning service about our influence, the influence that we have on others, not always positive. And our influence has certain domino effects that we not, may not be aware of, it, but it affects other people. How many, however you perceive your influence, when you come in contact with another person, you influence that person. And just possibly, you may influence that person so much that they're going to turn right around and influence someone else the same way you influence them. It, though it may be positive or negative. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1 says this, If I speak with the tongues of men and angels but have not love, 
I can have a big ministry. I can have my face on in front of a book. I can have my name in the journal. I can have my own TV program. Oh, I'm sorry, I misread that. If I speak in tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I am like a noisy, clanging, irritating, I'm sorry, I didn't say that, but a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If we don't have that grace and truth, that love and truth, guess what? Ding 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 ding
And they're supposed to be working together. It's interesting, these couplets in this passage of Scripture. But kindness and patience is evidence of God's work in our lives and in our ministries. Without which, our ministries could be rendered null and void. Love is patient and kind. Patient and kind. Patient is enduring, putting up with somebody. Putting up with Jeff. This is a very patient church, by the way. Very patient church. Putting up with a pastor such as they have. What were they thinking? But love is patient and love is kind. It's like a domino from, from the broader category of love. That's evidence of love, kindness. If we don't have kindness, if we're not exercising patience with other people, then that might not, we may not have God's love. We might have, we might kind of love doing this as a job or as a ministry. We might love the feeling we get from helping people and doing this and that. But if we don't have God's love, your failure to become the type of person I want you to be can make me irritated. That's not God's love. You not measuring up to my standards, that could irritate me. That could make me think you're lesser of a Christian than I am. That's not God's love. God's love is giving. God's love is other people focused. Now we urge you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, support the weak, be patient. Be patient with everyone. Whether it's when you're personal relationships in your family, in your church, or whether it's in ministry. Patience. Patience is at least one sign of God's love at work in your life. That's a domino. That's a domino. Love does not envy or boast. Love does not envy. That's, that's, that means I, I wish I had what you had, have. Or I'm not satisfied with what I, what I have or the type of person that God has made me to be or the position I have. Love does not envy. Domino number three, love does not brag. It's not arrogant. It does not boast. It's not, it's not puffed up. Love that focuses on self more than others is not God's love. Grace and truth. Truth in love. It goes right along. Verse five, Love seeks not its own. I'm not the focus of my life, but others are. We look to others to build others up rather than boasting and bragging. You know what? Boasting and bragging is just telling people how good you are because they'll never figure it out if you don't. So we got to brag. Brag about the person I wish I was or I hoped I could become or I want them to think. It's not us focused but it's others focused. These are the domino effects. Love is not rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoings, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, and the greatest of all of these is love. All of these things, the greatest is love. The greatest is love. It's not always about what we do, but how we do what we do. That's the most important. Are we gracious in how we deal with people who are outside of this church family or your own church family? Are we loving when we're trying to minister and to, to share the gospel with people? You know, sometimes if you're trying to share the good news of Jesus with people that aren't listening, it's hard just not to grab them by the shirt collar and just, tch, tch, tch. are you paying attention at all? Do you not get it that Almighty God in heaven sent His beloved Son to die on your, in this life in your place to be punished for your sins so that through faith in Him your sins could be forgiven and you could spend eternity in His home forever? Has it not dawned on you? And if it has, why in God's name do you not receive the salvation that He has offered? 
It's interesting that God offers the same salvation to the Billy Grahams of this world as he does the Adolf Hitlers of this world. That's hard for us to get our head around that. God loves you so much. He sent his son Jesus to die. To be punished for your sins and my sins. To take the penalty of death for us. That's love. That's, that's godly, godly focused love. So our goal for the next 40 years, 40 more years, sound like a political chant, 40 more years, you know, 40 more years, number one, to never retire, you hear me? Never retire from doing the work that God has called us to do. Never retire from serving Christ and helping others find Christ through the gospel. Number two, to continually be filled with and surrendered to the full power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We can do nothing apart from the Spirit of God working in and through us. And thirdly, to be faithfully connecting with others in order to connect them to Christ and to other Christ followers, which is His church. Our history of this church is in the, was in the Lord's hands. Our future in this church and as individuals is in the Lord's hands. Our faithfulness to Him comes only by His grace day by day. Our God has been so very faithful to us as a church family and to each of us in, as individuals. How can we not remain faithful to Him and joyful in His service the rest of our days? Father, we come to you in Jesus' name again today, Lord. We are so thankful for all that you've done in this church family. Lord, we want to be uh, forever serving you effectively, Lord. We don't want to be just faithful. We don't want to be faithful. We want to be fruitful. We want to be faithful and fruitful. That's what we believe you've called us to do, Lord. So, Father, we thank you and we just ask that you would be pleased, as our, has already been prayed, that you would be pleased to, to keep us on track, to keep us doing, effectively doing what you've called us to do. Reaching the lost, influencing others for eternity. And we'll thank you, Lord, for all these things. In Christ Jesus' precious name, together we pray. Amen. I'd like to invite you to stand with us. We are going to um, read our church covenant. This is what was sort of... Uh, brought together, crafted by this early church uh, at the very beginning. It's not simply a reminder, but this is sort of a recommitment of our church covenant and promise to one another by God's grace. And this was uh, the original written commitment of this church family to, be, to encourage one another to remain faithful. Church Covenant. <clears throat> Read it out loud with me, okay? We, the members of this church, do solemnly covenant together with God and with one another that we will abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. We will be kind to one another, putting away from us all bitterness, anger, wrath, clamor, and evil speaking, and we will be tender-hearted forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven us. We who are heads of families will observe the worship of God in our homes and will endeavor to lead our children or others committed to our care to a saving knowledge and personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We will attend regularly so far as the providence permits the services of worship on the Lord's day and such other services at the church may appoint. We will observe together the Lord's Supper and the ordinance of water baptism. We will aid as the Lord prospers us in the support of a faithful Christian ministry among us and in sending the saving gospel of Christ to the whole human family. We will also ourselves be missionaries everywhere we go in everything we do to everyone we meet. We will remember those who have rule over us, esteeming them very highly for their work's sake. 
For them we will faithfully pray, and with them we will faithfully labor, as it may be our privilege. God being our helper, this we do covenant to do. May the Lord hold us to that. We are going to sing the Lord's doxology. You may be familiar with this. And we will close in prayer following this. Christ's name, amen.